matemáticos, poetas e assim. Okay. John chapter 12. <clears throat> Red letter edition. Praise God. Okay, let's uh, pray. Um, Heavenly Father, again, uh, thank you for the, the worship and the uh, beginning of prayer for this service. And we just thank you, Father, that we can gather around your word. Uh, the only thing uh, that we know is where your spirit is upon. And uh, we thank you, Father, for the, your people that you have called by your name for this purpose, um, speak to our hearts, open up our hearts, our minds, concentration, uh, put away uh, things that happen today in our life, tiredness, weariness, and just quicken us uh, because you are so faithful. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, um, so a new chapter. <laughs> We're up to... John 12, and you might know how many chapters are in John, but uh, this is still very close to his crucifixion right now. He's only six days out at this point. Six more days he'll be crucified. So um, it's amazing. Um, <clears throat> and um, I want to talk about, uh, in, in this chapter, a couple things before we read a couple verses a couple things to consider and to realize because two really um, uh, different things that are happening here. Uh, number one, we have a, a pound of ointment, right? A pound of spikenard. And, and spikenard is even available today. It's, it's, it's a you know, precious thing. It's, uh, it does a lot of healing things, but it is an oil. And they... Um, They got this oil. This oil came from India. That's where it's from. Um, but uh, what's, uh, what's unusual here, uh, if, if you read how this happens and that Mary anoints the feet of Jesus is what this is about. But the Romans, the leaders, the, the high officials, the Romans, the ones who could afford it, uh, basically used it to anoint their head. They would anoint their leaders, their men, uh, as, a, as, a, as somebody in great power and high authority, um, deserving it, um, you know, and um, just authority and, and leadership and, and things that, that, that went with. Uh, but here, Mary anoints his feet, just the complete opposite. Uh, instead of uh, somebody who's anointed for high authority, he's anointed too, um, but um, more of uh, a, a servant. You know, the feet is the servant, and, and it speaks of humility, and it speaks of lowliness. And he even said, that, you know, she's doing this for my burial. You know, so just a complete different picture of what, they do it for and what Christ was done for. And then the second thing that's a little unusual here that, to, to take note of is she dried his feet with her hair. And for a Jewish woman, uh, this was very rare because they didn't, uh, they didn't um, unveil themselves. They were completely covered. The hair was something that would not have been uh, opened in public, you know, not seen at all. You know, so... It, 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 instead of being open and using that hair, this was something that would be 
completely veiled. So those two things stand out here um, as something that is really not of the common and, uh, and of the norm. When you think about this ointment, uh, this spike nard, um, it did have great value. And they looked at it as great value. They perceived it as great value. But even though it was of something of great value, they said, this is a waste. You know, how could something be of great value be a waste? And it's how we perceive it. You know, how are you perceiving the value of this? And it's hard to perceive value of something when you don't own it. So they are making an assessment of, of wow, this is of great value from a material, a, a materialistic world vision. Uh, the world says it's valuable, it's valuable. If the world says it's a waste, it's a waste. And how you use it, you know, something of great value can be also be deemed as something wasteful. You wasted it, it should have been used here. But that's made by somebody who does not own it, who doesn't own it outright. This is not theirs to make a decision on of the value. That's Mary's decision because she's the one who owned it. And how she assessed it is, is how it should be, it's how it should be looked upon. So, you know, what what is value to her? What it, what it was what is value to her and and even with us what is value to us you know think of this God you know looks upon us and we are sinners and we are far from him and because of our sin we've separated ourselves from a holy God and we might look at ourselves as not something of great value at all we might look at ourselves as very weak individuals and unable to even be used. You know, no value, no use. And God says great value. God's assessment of us is always in a great value and a high, high reward here uh, of how he sees us. We might not even look at ourselves in that picture. And that doesn't matter because we're not, we're not ours, we're his. And he owns us. So he's, he's the one that says that's of great value. Boy, is that. And, and, you know, we must learn to look at ourselves in not in our old sin nature under that value system, but under God's value system who esteems us so high, who looks at us, uh, ourselves and say, boy, can I use him? They are usable. And because they're usable, they become great value. You know, it's just it's just who owns it. Who owns it is 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 what it falls upon. That's the one who who can determine the value of it. Maybe in Mary's idea, maybe she felt like she didn't even have enough of it. I don't even have enough of this to do what I want to do. I can only anoint the feet, even though Jesus is saying this is for my entire burial, all of it but maybe she didn't have enough. So maybe she didn't think the value was high at all. Or maybe she, you know, like like how they, they looked at it. You know, wow, this could have been used in another capacity. You know, and, and everybody wants to put a value it and tell you how it needs to be done. Where God is the, God is the potter. We are just clay. And we must be, available to be used in whatever purpose he has for us. And that purpose will be great value, great value. So, so they thought it was a waste, you know, and you know, what, what is, what is a value, what is valuable to us? When we determine that value, we must look at it from a, the word standpoint, the word what we get from the Bible, what we get from the Word of God determines the value. Not what we've done in life or what we've accomplished or haven't accomplished in life. We can't look at our failures, our shortcomings, our disgrace, any of that. Because that has been 
taken out of the in in from the word of God from being born again that's all a clean slate now we are a new creation and from that creation God says great value great value Satan wants to bring in our past and wants that to be the discussion he wants that to determine what is valuable and, and what is not so they then have a a fight really over you know um the value the purpose of that value and then the worth this this is the discussion that's going on here you know what what is the value what is the purpose and, and what is what is the worth but once again they don't they don't possess it so they can't really come through and make that uh, decision. So here, here's what's going on. They're, like I said earlier, they're six days out to Passover. Six days out. And the first thing is said is in John 12, 7, where this continues to go back and forth over and over. What is the value? What is the purpose? What is the significance? Why is this being done? And it's all against the one who owns it. And really, they, they, they shouldn't have a say. And Jesus defends her and says in, in verse 7, Let her alone, let her alone. Against the day of my burying has she kept this. Has she kept this? Against the day of my burying. So now this value has just changed. The value has changed. The, it is now turned to something with a, you know, how we look back at they, they didn't understand it, but how we look back at now it's for his burial. Now it's a great purpose and a great significance and, and a great value. So the ointment had a purpose for this time, the value wasn't to be sold and distributed, which maybe could have touched a few people, but now it's it's being used to anoint Jesus Christ, and and now it's a it, it's going to be something that's valued through, you know, through the entire church age. I mean that this woman would have had this saved for this purpose and, and and now there's a there's a bigger value and uh, because it's it's gonna it's gonna be eternal and 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 it's gonna be remembered it's written in the Bible it's gonna this this event that took place is is it's gonna be remembered it, it, it's not gonna be used in any other capacity but for that capacity for that purpose for that time and that 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 expands the value. That expands the value because there was nothing done for that. Nothing was there. So the value was beyond the price that they thought. They thought, oh wow, we can sell this and give this to the poor. Look how many people can touch, you know. And uh, and and boy, people love to make comments like that when it's not theirs to give. You know, if you think about it. You know, I've got great plans with your money and what you own. You know, I don't have anything, but let me tell you what to do with yours. You know, it's something like that. But but the the ointment became greater. The ointment became greater when the purpose became known. The purpose was his death. That increased the value. You know, we look at things and we don't see the end or the reasoning sometimes. Sometimes the reasoning by God is, is kept from us and we can't see it or we don't know it until the Holy Spirit reveals it. Now it becomes revealed when Jesus says, she's done this, she's had this for this time of my burial. So that became the purpose and now the value became so much greater because the purpose became revealed. When the purpose is revealed, the value gets greater. When we can see the purpose of a lost soul being saved, 
that value now becomes greater. The life becomes greater. The, the, the time of evangelism of sowing the seed now became greater. You know, we might sow a seed and we might never see the value. The value might be made to the forefront later. And then when that does, wow, great value. Look what God's doing in that life. But at the, but the time we sowed the seed, we didn't see anything. We don't see what's beyond what's under the ground. We don't see the seed growing. But it doesn't mean there's no value there. There has to be there had to have been great value in the seed, even though I didn't see the results. So we must change how we view what is valuable and what is not. The little things are of great value. And we do not despise the day of small things because that's the value. The value is being faithful in the small things. Believe in God in the small things. Trust in God in the things that are not seen. Being faithful to God in, in, in the time of, of, of even trouble and loneliness and depression and darkness. Knowing that, wow, great value can come out of this. How about the time where only two or three pray together? God sees great value. Great value. Two or three people witnessing great value. Watch what God can do just out of that. And, and we are so nearsighted, we see things even like they did. We could have put this to better use. We see value in other areas than what you're doing, God. And we minimize the moving of the Holy Spirit in our lives by doing that. Because we look at it from a human viewpoint. And from a human viewpoint, you talk to 10 people, nine of them will, will agree with the apostles, give it to the poor. Because you can do more with that. You can do, you know, by sight, it looks like you can help more people. But you're missing the spiritual outcome. You're missing what is, has greater value. So in verse 7, Jesus tells them the way it is. He says, uh, for the poor will, you'll always have, but me you'll not always have. What a statement, you know, it, to think about that. The poor will always be with you. You'll always have an opportunity to use your, to be, uh, what's it called? The, uh, a humanitarian. And I bet you they never brought up that again. It probably never came into their mind, oh, let's do something for the poor this week. But with this, now you have to do something. You know, and it sounds spiritual. And it sounds like what somebody would want to do. You know, we want to deal with the issues of the, but there's no doubt about that. But not when it comes to like Christ says, you're not always going to have me, you know, and and where is your value system? Where's your value system now? You know, you know, socialists believe that, hey, if you can distribute everything equally, there will be no poor. And you've all heard it. And it's... Jesus says, are always going to be with you. So who's right? <laughs> you know, the Bible is what's going to speak in that area. Take from the rich, distribute it evenly, and you eliminate the poor class. Uh, no, you don't. You never will. They've never done it even since this time up until present. And, oh, we're so sophisticated now. We're so advanced. We've come such a long way since this. We're more advanced than the Bible days. You're going to hear a lot of that, like I talked Sunday, you know. But, um, but, no, the poor will always be with you. 
And, and you know what? Think about that. If everything was evil, there would be no giving to those in, in need. And you're saying, well, there wouldn't be a need. Oh, there will be plenty of needs. If you, as long as mankind is here, there's always a need. There's always going to be a need. Even the one that's evenly will come up with something else that he needs. Well, that one's got a 65-inch TV. <laughs> Mine ain't that big. Mine's only 55-inch. I'm getting ripped. You know, and they'll always find something, you know, and and look how, you know, if you look at, you know, even people that have this great heart for the poor and the needy, and it's amazing, and we need to, and I'm not downplaying that. And, and, and again, this is why we, you know, Haiti is, and we hit them and we hit these and we, we supply and thank God for men like Pastor Julie and Matthews who, I mean, feeds the poor. I mean, and Pastor Keith, with it, they feed the poor. I mean, it's amazing. Others talk about it and, and they might give here and there, but the ones who are, you know, boots on the ground is a different ball game. You know, you're in a different level, but distribution through this socialistic type of thinking is is just demonic. It just doesn't work. I mean, it never has, it never will, and those countries are in worse shape than ever because of that type of thinking. You know, when you eliminate those that truly give, and it's very clear that the, the rich are the ones who give. I mean, it's just a known fact. I mean, there's numbers on it. Um, so if you even out, it doesn't mean that then everybody will give properly because they just don't. So Jesus knew, and he said, you know, they will be with you always. So, um, so the word of God tells us and shows us what is valuable, what is valuable. And the Bible is clear to tell it. I mean, how God would look at us, a, a you know, individuals that are so depraved, and so lost, and so wicked, and so evil, and he says, that's what is valuable to me, and this is why he sent his son to die for us, amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for the word of God. Father, we just praise you. A greater purpose, a greater purpose is what has been made known Thank you, Father, for opening up our eyes and let us understand the value, even the value of one lost soul. Give us the value of the lost, Lord. Give us the value of the lost to be able to uh, see the hearts of individuals that are, that are completely lost in this world and that you name them as valuable. Bless the, uh, the offering, and um, in Jesus' name, and uh, bring people out for outreach and evangelism on Saturday. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Shut off. I lost it.